Welcome to Social Elo Ministries, where we are committed to glorifying God while exposing the devil. There's some confusion regarding what a prophet is. I'm just going to touch, touch the surface of that, that subject. The thing is, there are many people out there who have the gift of prophecy, and they can prophesy and they can tell you things accurately, but those individuals are not prophets. One of the key things about a prophet is that that person points people to the Lord. That person points people to the Lord. Because there are many people out there giving out quote-unquote prophetic utterances that do not glorify God at all. If you break it down, basically it's a bunch of gibberish. In Luke 1, Zacharias received an inv or a visitation from the angel of the Lord, Gabriel. And starting in verse 11, And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord, standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife, Elizabeth, shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. By the way, that's John the Baptist. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. So John was going to live a life that is consecrated to the Lord. The gifts and callings of the Lord are without repentance. There are many people who operate in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And actually sometimes they're not even gifts of the Holy Spirit. They're demonic gifts meant to mimic the gifts of the Holy Spirit. But you cannot look at a person's gifts and not look for the fruit of the Holy Spirit. When Jesus spoke about false prophets, he said we know them by their fruits. So that a prophet has to be reflective of the Lord. A prophet won't be perfect, but he or she has to be reflective of the Lord. Because some so-called prophets will remind you of the devil, and that's for a good reason. That's because those individuals are serving the devil. And it continues, And he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. A person who is a prophet is going to be filled with the Holy Spirit of the Lord. And as a result, that individual is going to demonstrate the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians 5, verses 20 through, 22 through 23. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. That right there is one of the key descriptions for a prophet. Someone who turns people to the Lord. Someone who turns people to the Lord. And I'll pause for a second. One of the reasons why Jesus basically said that John was more than a prophet is because John led a lot of people to him. John led a lot of people into the kingdom of heaven. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias or Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just and to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. The church is referred to as the bride of Christ. And one of the things prophets do is they prepare the Christ or the, the Lord's bride for his return. Again, prophets turn people to the Lord. Because as I'll show here later, there are some people who prophesy, they may even do it with the right spirit, 
but they're not leading people to the Lord. Now he mentioned about in the spirit and power of Elijah, turning people to the Lord. And even in the Old Testament, we see an example of how a prophet is turning people to the Lord. And before I actually read this about Elijah, even back in the book of Exodus, when Moses led people, the Israelites, out of Egypt, he was just leading them out of Egypt and into the promised land. He was leading them to the Lord. He was leading them to the Lord. But if you just look at it at the surface level, that he was leading people into the promised land, you missed a greater picture. He was leading people to the Lord. Moses was a humble man, but he also destroyed the golden, golden idol, the golden calf that the Israelites had built. Again, taking people out, out of idolatry and leading them to the Lord, pointing them to the Lord. But Gabriel mentioned about John the Baptist operating the spirit and power of Elijah. That spirit and power of Elijah is the Holy Spirit. And in 1 Kings 18, starting verse 17, And it came to pass when Ahab saw Elijah, and Ahab said unto him, Art thou he that troubleth Israel? And he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but thou and thy father's house, in, in that ye have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and thou hast followed Balaam. And I'll pause for a second. The Lord also empowers prophets to proclaim judgment. And he was pointing out to Ahab, who was an evil king, that he was evil. So prophets, yes, demonstrate the fruit of the Holy Spirit. But prophets also tell it like it is. If a person is evil, they're going to say that person is evil. They're not going to call sweet bitter or bitter sweet. They're not going to call good evil or evil good. They're going to tell it exactly what it is. If something's evil, they're going to call it evil. If something's good, they're going to call it good. Sweet, sweet, bitter, bitter. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. Prophets operate based on the unction of the Holy Spirit, so they tell the truth. Now therefore, send and gather to me all Israel unto Mount Carmel and the prophets of Baal, 450, and the prophets of the groves, 400, which eat at Jezebel's table. And Ahab sent all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. Then said Elijah unto the people, I, even I only, remain a prophet of the Lord. But Baal's prophets are 450. And he set up a challenge to show whether him or those 450 prophets, which one served the true and living God. A true prophet will confront false prophets. True prophets will confront false prophets. True prophets are not going to have fellowship with known false prophets. True prophets are not going to fellowship with darkness. Not going to tolerate it. In Jeremiah 28, we see how Jeremiah was around the false prophet Hananiah. Hananiah was proclaiming things in the name of the Lord that sounded good until the Lord let Jeremiah know that Hananiah was telling lies. And then Jeremiah called him out. In addition, the Lord told Jeremiah what Hananiah 
had a nice punishment would be death. And he died after Jeremiah proclaimed judgment against him. The Holy Spirit, he does not play. The Holy Spirit is God. And a part of this confusion about many people thinking just because someone has the gift of prophecy, as stated in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 10, just because a person has a gift of prophecy doesn't mean the Lord has called, trained, equipped, and commissioned that person as one of his prophets. In Joel 2, 28 through 29, the Lord spoke about how in these days he would pour out his spirit on all flesh and how he would speak to young men in visions, old men in dreams, and about how people would prophesy. That took effect in Acts 2 on the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit of the Lord descended on the earth and he filled the original apostles, the apostles of the Lamb. And those gifts are still in operation today, but those gifts are in operation as the Holy Spirit wills. As a result, unlike back in the Old Testament times when only certain individuals could prophesy, and if you heard someone prophesying, then you'd know that that person is a prophet. Nowadays, many more people may prophesy as a result of the dispensation of the Holy Spirit, but it does not mean that they are a prophet. Ephesians 4.11 speaks about the different ministry gifts, where it says, and he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. So only some are prophets. And there are many people today who have been erroneously identified as being prophets. But the Lord had not called them. They may have the gift of prophecy. And a lot of times you can tell which God they're serving by where they point people. For example, they may give a great sermon. Everything sounds great. But towards the end, they start talking about sowing a seed. God doesn't ask people to sow a seed. Jesus told us that we can only serve one master. We can't serve two masters. Either we want to love one and hate the other. And we cannot serve God and mammon. We cannot serve God and money. Again, I'm only touching the tip of the iceberg regarding the subject. But not everyone who prophesies is a prophet. And not everyone who calls him or herself a prophet is a prophet of the Lord. 1 Kings 18, there was one prophet of the Lord versus 450 false prophets. In this world, there are many more people who are false prophets, calling themselves prophets, but they're not prophets of the Lord. One of the gifts of the Holy Spirit is discerning of spirits. Then there's also word of knowledge. And those are two of the ways the Holy Spirit may let you know who is a true prophet of the Lord versus someone who is not. Because there's some people saying that they're prophets and the Holy Spirit will let you know, liar. Um, when I mention about prophets, point people to the Lord. Not because a person prophesies, it doesn't mean that the person is doing it with the correct spirit. And it also doesn't mean that it is something that's glorifying to the Lord. In 1 John 4, 1, it states, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Many false prophets are gone out into the world. In Revelation 19.10, the Apostle John wrote, And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou, do it not. I am thy fellow servant of thy brethren that have 
testimony of Jesus. It says, worship God. I pause for a second. There are some people who have claimed that they have had angelic encounters, but those angels wanted them to worship them. This angel told John, don't do it. I am thy fellow servant. A person who is a prophet will not want you to worship him or her either. And a male prophet is called a prophet. A female prophet is called a prophetess. If a person wants you to worship him or her, if a person wants you to be his or her armor bearer, there are different things that if a person is not a true prophet of the Lord, he or she will want you to worship him or her. It may not be overt, but it equates to worship. And a person who is a false prophet love to use titles because quite frankly, they may have gifts, but they don't have fruit. And they try to use titles as a way to put you in subjection to them. And they may use terms like being your spiritual covering, which is a false doctrine. Again, another tool to put you in subjection to them. And putting in subjection to them equates to worship. You start looking up to the person as opposed to God. But it continues. Worship God. So a true prophet is all going to tell you to worship God. And not just tell you to worship God, but insist that you worship God. And a true prophet may never use the title prophet. It is something that you may have to discern. The Lord may have to tell you that that individual is one of his or her prophets. It says, For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So there are many people who are prophesying things. They sound good, but it doesn't glorify Jesus. That's one distinction between a true and a false prophet. Just because something sounds good doesn't mean that it is good. In 1 Samuel 18... Starting in verse 7, this was shortly after David had basically fought Saul's battle and defeated Goliath. And the women answered one another as they played and said, Saul had slain his thousands and David his ten thousands. And Saul was very wroth. And the saying displeased him. And he said, they have ascribed unto David ten thousands, and to me they have ascribed but thousands. And what can he have more but the kingdom? And Saul I David from that day forward. The Bible tells us that when the Lord had Samuel the seer anoint David to replace Saul, that the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. So the way Saul was acting, being jealous because people were saying how many people David had slain that caused him to be jealous, that is not a fruit of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said we well, know them by their fruit. And Saul, he was showing fruit that was indicative which spirit was guiding him. And it continues. And it came to pass on the morrow that the evil spirit from God came upon Saul and he prophesied. So 1 John 4 1 tells us to test the spirit because not every spirit is of God and that there are many false prophets. Now the Lord sent an evil spirit upon Saul, but Saul prophesied under the unction of an evil spirit. True prophecy glorifies. Jesus. But here Saul was prophesying under the unction of an impure spirit, an evil spirit. So you have to be careful who you're receiving from. That a prophet is filled with the Holy Spirit and is operating under the unction of the Holy Spirit. As demonstrated by the fruit of the Spirit. So, the evil spirit from God 
came upon Saul, and he prophesied in the midst of the house, and David played with his hand. At other times, and there was a javelin in Saul's hand. And Saul cast the javelin, for he said, I will smite David even to the wall with it. And David avoided out of his presence twice. So the Lord had anointed David to replace Saul. But rather than mentoring David, Saul tried to kill him. And here initially, at least twice, David had to avoid Saul. So even though Saul had been prophesying, he clearly was not demonstrating the fruit of the Holy Spirit. So please ensure that when you see someone prophesying, the information may be accurate. And there's more to prophesying because sometimes a person, for example, may have a strong word of knowledge gift. And as a result, they can tell you things about what's going on in your life presently and also things from your past. But also operating in that gift is also indicative of someone who, well, psychics primarily operate in a strong demonic gift that mimics word of knowledge because they use familiar spirits to gain information about you regarding what, what's going on in your life right now, possibly what you had for breakfast, maybe the next check in your checkbook if you have checks, your driver's license numbers, things like that. But revealing those things, those things don't glorify the Lord. Telling you something you already know, that doesn't glorify the Lord. In Acts 16, we see an example of someone who used impure spirits. Acts 16, starting verse 16. And it came to pass, as we went to prayer, a certain damsel, possessed with a spirit of divination, met us. So there are some people claiming to be prophets, but they're actually diviners. Which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. She was a fortune teller. Sadly, there are many preachers today who are allowing false prophets in their, in their midst, in their churches, where it says, her masters much gain by soothsaying. So they'll have false prophets come into their churches to basically tell people their fortunes, which oftentimes is incorrect because they're not prophesying using the Holy Spirit of the Lord. And then they'll share the dividends. The false prophet and the pastors will share the dividends from whatsoever the prophet is able to raise, the quote-unquote prophet is able to raise. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show us the way of salvation. So this soothsayer was following behind the men of God, saying that they were men of God, so she was aligning herself with them to make herself look righteous. But she was not. And false prophets will do that. False prophets will try to align themselves with bona fide ministers. When a bona fide minister realizes that a person is a false prophet, it is that minister's responsibility to get away from the person. Whether it means casting the person out or separating him or herself from the individual. It's kind of like with Jezebel. When she married Ahab, she was able to use his power. And in fact, in 1 Kings 21, when she illegally obtained Naboth's vineyard, it's because she signed a document in Ahab's name. So she got close enough to use his power, his authority to do those things. And this did she many days. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out. So come out of her. And he came out that same hour. So she was saying things about the Lord. But it grieved Paul. There are times when a false prophet will say things to you using the Lord's name, but it will grieve your spirit. 
the Holy Spirit will let you know that those are not my words. And it will grieve your spirit. Do not entertain that stuff, because in some cases you may end up subjecting yourself to witchcraft. And there are some false prophets who are actually witches. In 1 Samuel 28, I'm going to start in verse 6. But Saul, after operating in years of rebellion against the Lord, he was about to go into a battle with the Philistines, and he needed to hear from the Lord. And when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord answered him not, neither by dreams, nor by Urim, nor by prophets. Then Saul said unto his servants, Seek me a woman that hath a familiar spirit, that I may go to her and inquire of her. And the servants said unto him, Behold, there is a woman that hath a familiar spirit at Endor. We oftentimes call this lady the witch at Endor. She used a familiar spirit, which is divination. And it continues, And Saul disguised himself and put on other raiment, and he went. And two men with him, and they came to the woman by night, and said, I pray thee, divine unto me by the familiar spirit, and bring me him up, whom I shall name unto thee. And the woman said unto him, Behold, thou knowest what Saul hath done, how he hath cut off those that have familiar spirits, and the wizards out of the land. Wherefore, then layest thou a snare for my life to cause me to die. So Saul had been operating in rebellion against the Lord. And at one point he was doing what the Lord had said by executing those who were operating in witchcraft, divination, using familiar spirits. But now he had resorted to the dark arts. But Saul had a choice to obey the Lord or not. And because of that, the relationship fell apart. So now Saul was relying on the witch at Endor to tell him his future. And he found out his future, and it was actually accurate. His future was he was going to die the following day. And he did. Hmm. So prophets are not just about prophesying. Many people want to treat prophets as if they're fortune tellers. And when people put it out there that the Lord has called them as a prophet and they start using the title prophet, then they run the risk of people coming to them basically for their fortune, people coming to them to get their fortune, so to speak, but they're not coming to them to see Christ. And even if the prophet were to give them Christ, they don't want to hear that. They want to hear their fortune which puts a prophet at risk of starting operating using a spirit of divination. Like I said, this is only the tip of the iceberg, but prophets lead people to Jesus. And I start off by talking about John the Baptist and how Gabriel said that he would operate in the spirit of power of Elijah and turn people to the Lord. John unveiled Jesus. Before John even baptized Jesus, in John 1, verse 29, The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him, and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. A lot of people would not look at that revelation as being a prophecy, but it was. A lot of times people want prophets to give them personal prophecies. But if that prophet is going to give a person the true word of the Lord, it may not be something that just relates to that individual. 
Jesus did not do anything except that which he saw his father doing in heaven. Prophets have to have to be that kingdom minded where they're doing things. In fact, the Holy Spirit does what <laughs> what he's being told from heaven. So if a person is being led by the Holy Spirit, that person is also going to do what he or she is being told that's coming from the throne, from the throne of God. A prophet is supposed to be a mouthpiece for God. So even in casual conversations, a prophet has to be careful what he or she says. Because a prophet doesn't have to say, Thus said the Lord, or God said, and there's a separate teaching about that that's coming up. But a prophet doesn't have to say something like that in order for it to be prophetic. All John said was, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. People didn't know who the Lamb of God was at a point in time. They knew that about 700 years prior that Isaiah had prophesied, as written in Isaiah 9-6, about the coming Prince of Peace. But they didn't know who Jesus was. John the Baptist revealed who Jesus was to people. Because before that, and even after that, in fact, some people were saying that he was just the carpenter's son. But John unveiled Christ to the people. Today, prophets unveil Christ to people. Prophets point people to Christ. Prophets do not point people to themselves. And that's part of the reason why Most of the true prophets of the Lord that are out there today, they do not use the title prophet because they're not trying to draw attention to themselves. It's all about the Lord. John the Baptist is the one who would say that he must decrease so that Jesus can increase. That is the mindset of a prophet. And a part of many people are called, Jesus said many are called but few are chosen. So there are people who will have a legitimate calling in their life to be a prophet but it doesn't mean they've been through the process to be commissioned as a prophet. And there's a difference. And oftentimes, it takes many years from the time the Lord calls a person before he commissions the individual and sends him or her out to start ministering. Um, I mentioned before that some people want a word, but they don't want the word. And false prophets, they will offer you a word. Well, the Bible tells us that Jesus was and is the word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was made. And I'm mixing up two scriptures, but the word was made flesh. So Jesus was the word. He was made flesh. So a person who offers you a word, they're giving you something, and they may be like Saul, prophesying with an impure spirit. When a person gives you the word, they're giving you Jesus. The spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus. It glorifies Jesus. And yes, their people, they want their ears tickled. They don't want to get Jesus. They want to get something else. In Luke 17, verses 11 through 19, it tells a story of 10 lepers. Jesus healed all of them, told them to go show themselves to the priest which was in accordance with the law, so he could declare them clean. One of them, a Samaritan, when he realized that he was clean, returned to thank the Lord. The other nine, they wanted healing, but they didn't want Jesus. But the Samaritan, he wanted healing and he wanted Jesus. Some people, they want a prophet to give them personal prophecies, but they don't want Jesus. One of the words that prophets use a lot, <laughs> one of the top five words that prophets will use is repent. When John the Baptist came out of the wilderness, he was telling people, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Jesus, when he started his ministry, he was telling people, repent for the kingdom is at hand. 
Prophets will tell people, repent, for the kingdom is at hand. Prophets point people to Jesus. Moses led probably around two million or more people out of bondage to the Lord. John the Baptist, for as many people as he baptized, he was leading them to the Lord. Elijah, telling people to stop worshiping other gods, he was leading them to the Lord. Jeremiah was leading people to the Lord. Jonah went to Nineveh, preached in a city, and he led 120,000 people to repentance. Jonah had some issues, and that's another story, but he led 120,000 people to the Lord, to repentance. Prophets lead people to the Lord. Prophets are not about glorifying themselves. They're about glorifying the Lord. And a part of the fruit of the Spirit is a person's actions will tell you who is their master. When Jesus went to the temple and he saw what they were doing, he made whips and scourged them. Turned over tables because they had turned his father's house from a house of prayer into a den of robbers. Yes, prophets will get in that mindset where they're like Jesus. They may have a calm demeanor. But when certain things happen, it is time to flip tables over. It is time to flip tables over and tell people to repent. I had a specific commission regarding this message. There's so much more I could have said. But I'll close in the sense the way I began. Or began. Not everyone who prophesies is a prophet. And not everyone who prophesies is prophesying under the unction of the Holy Spirit of the Lord. Test the spirits, because not every spirit is of God. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So if you're receiving a prophecy, ask yourself, how does this glorify the Lord? How does this draw me closer to Jesus?